Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12. John said that, well, Jesus said to John, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of white in the Bible. W-H-I-T-E, the color white. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, we're going to go there in chapter 9 and verse 8 and 9. And Ecclesiastes is generally accepted to have been written by Solomon the king, son of David, and Bathsheba, who was reported at the time to be the wisest man who ever lived for that time period. Uh, Jesus said that uh, he was even greater than Solomon. And you can find that in Matthew chapter 12, verse 42. Jesus said, The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. And of course, Jesus is speaking of himself. Now, if you want to, uh, the Lord asked Solomon uh, that he was going to give him a gift. And he says, what do you want? And Solomon was very humbled, and he says, I need, Lord, I need your wisdom to rule these people. And the Lord says, basically, uh, the Bob translation, a uh, good choice, Solomon. You didn't ask for great wealth. You didn't ask for the lives of your enemies, you know, to, for your enemies to be killed. But you ask for wisdom so that you may rule my people with, well, yeah, with wisdom, right? So the Lord gave him the wisdom and uh, gave him peace on all sides from his enemies and gave him wealth. But in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29, we read, and God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. So he gave him wisdom like the sand on the seashore. Verse 30. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men. Then even the Ezraite and Heman and Chalcol and Darda, the sons of Mahol, and his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He spake also of beasts and of fowl and of creeping things and of fishes. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. All right, so let's take a look at Ecclesiastes 9 and 8 and Ecclesiastes 9, 9. Solomon writes, let thy garments, you know, the clothing, let thy garments be always white. Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity. And vanity means uh, worthless, because our lives on this earth are basically worthless because they're going to come to an end. So... What happens on this earth is just 
it's you know it's vain there's just no there's no meaning to our life on this earth one day all of us will die and they'll throw us in the ground and the worms will have dinner live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the uh, life of thy vanity which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity for that is thy portion in this life see christ worry uh christ was not worried but concerned about telling people about the life after this life eternal life and when you read the book of uh genesis god set a time limit for people to live after the flood 120 years before the flood people lived seven eight hundred nine hundred years some of them lived pretty close to a thousand but uh yeah for that is this portion in this life and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun so there you go uh why why white garments oh oh i i'm glad you asked that question well let's take a look now king david wanted to build a house for the lord the temple but the lord said nope you're a bloody man you're not going to do it however your son will do it so what david did was is he assembled all the materials and got everything ready all solomon had to do was um get the craftsmen together and put it together and in case you don't know it um over in the middle east there's a group of people uh not the arabs and they want to rebuild the temple you can read about the temple institute or the temple mount faithful two different groups and they want to rebuild the temple as a denial of what christ did on the cross oh yeah and to my understanding they have assembled all the materials they are have trained a priesthood and they're ready to go and uh, there is some speculation that the dome of the rock uh for the muslims is in the way i don't know how true that is other people say there's a temple underground i don't know i've never been there i've never seen it your guess is as good as mine but in the days of christ king herod was in charge of the temple and uh you know when uh jesus came around and took a whip of cords and uh whipped the money changers out of the temple and overthrew their ta uh, tables spilling all their money uh let's just say they were not happy campers and i will guarantee you that herod was getting a cut of the money oh you better believe he was getting a cut of that money big time so you know people generally don't do things for free generally so uh but with that in mind uh just remember the um let's see the babylonians a little no, uh unknown fact the babylonians came in the days of jeremiah and destroyed the temple and then after 70 years it was rebuilt under the leadership of ezra and nehemiah uh, they have books in the bible believe it or not ezra was the priest nehemiah was the king if memory serves me correctly 
and uh, they rebuilt the temple. And then uh, that was the temple that Herod inherited. And the Romans came along in 70 AD and destroyed the temple, just like the Babylonians did. Do you know that the temple was destroyed by the Babylonians and the Romans on the same exact anniversary day? Different years, but the same day. Oh, yeah. Was God sending a message to the you-know-whos? And I'm talking this way because uh, I'm posting this on you-know-who tube. And um, if you don't talk this way, well, they delete your uh, vids. So, yeah. So even though this is going to be on probably BitChute, Rumble, and Odyssey, um, I got to, you know, just remember it's a tube audience. So, um, all right, so let's read 2 Chronicles chapter 5 and verse 1. Uh, the Chronicles is the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel and Judah. Well, I'm sorry, the Kings of Judah, at least here, because Solomon was ruler over all Israel, all 12 tribes. But in the days of Solomon's son, Northern Israel decided to go it alone. And uh, yeah, that's a whole nother story. So, Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 1. Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. The temple was built. And Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated, and the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. And uh, verse 2, Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Wherefore, all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast, which was in the seventh month. So the seventh month is around October, November. This is probably, uh, possibly the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm not sure. Uh, according to the Bible, the beginning of the year was uh, March or April. And uh, we got our calendar from Rome and they wanted to start the year at the end of December in the middle of dead of winter but in the Bible the start of the year was timed to the beginning of the spring you know the beginning of the planting planting season for crops planting so verse 4 and all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark, and they brought up the ark, and the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the holy vessels, holy vessels, that were in the tabernacle, did uh, these did the priests and the Levites bring up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him before the ark sacrificed sheep and oxen, which could not be told nor numbered for multitude. And the priests brought in the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord unto his place to the oracle of the house into the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubims, uh, cherubims a type of angel people, for the cherubims, cherubims spread forth their wings over the place of the ark and the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof 
above. And they drew out the staves of the ark. Uh, those are poles, okay? Uh, I guess the ark had rings that were attached, and you could put the poles through the rings, and that is how you would carry it. You would carry it by uh, the wooden poles. You did not want to touch the ark. So you had to be very, very careful uh, somebody once touched the ark and they they died. So, and they drew out the staves of the ark that the ends of the staves were seen from the ark before the oracle, but they were not seen without. And there it is unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables which Moses put therein at Horeb. Uh, two tables. This is the, the original Ten Commandments. So, you know what, people? You'll have people that will tell you, well, we believe the Bible as far as the original manuscripts. Well, guess what? What they're basically telling you is, well, you know, the Ten Commandments might be right, but since we don't have those tables, uh, you know, the tables of stone that... Moses brought down from the mountain, written by the finger of God. We're not 100% sure that the Ten Commandments are right. You know, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not kill. Uh, we don't know. So when you read somebody's statement of faith, um, every minister should have a statement of faith so that you know what they believe. I mean, anybody could say God with us. I mean, a Satanist can say God with us. But uh, when they say that we believe the Bible, uh, and they mention the original manuscripts, well, you know you're dealing with a devil because we don't have the original manuscripts. We have copies of copies of copies of copies of copies of copies of copies, of copies times 100 probably. And what they're saying is, well, we don't believe that the Lord could actually keep his word straight uh, after all these years. So since we don't have the original manuscripts, we don't know. As if God could create heaven and earth and all the trees and animals, but he couldn't keep men writing the Bible and he couldn't keep it straight, right? That's what they're basically telling you in a roundabout way. That's why Christ warned us about wolves and sheep's clothing. Yeah. So, there was nothing in the ark save the two tables which Moses put therein at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. The old covenant. Christ gave us the New Covenant. Oh, yeah. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Uh, basically, when it says by course, I believe what it's talking about is uh, everybody was there doing whatever the job was. But when it says that every, you know, by course, uh, in the days of John the Baptist's father, um, they had a time period when they would perform the job and then they would go home and the next person would take over and they could, you know, they took turns. That's what it means by, uh, by course. So if you had 90, well, let's say, let's say you got 100 priests. 25 would take uh, maybe the first three months, and then 25 would take the next three months, 25 the next three months, and then 25 the next three months. And I'm not saying it was three months, but, you know, maybe it was a month, month and a half. I don't know. But they took turns doing whatever they did. Verse 12. And the Levites, which were the singers... 
all of them of Asaph, of Heman, and Jeduth, uh, something like that, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed, clothed, being arrayed in white linen. Being arrayed in white linen. Why is this in the Bible? Why is being in, uh, clothed in white linen important? Well, we're going to get there. We're going to take a look. Being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them 120 priests, sounding with trumpets. Now, this could have been the Feast of Trumpets, too. I'm not sure. You got uh, uh, Passover is a spring feast, and then you got uh, fall feasts. So, um, and it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praise the Lord saying, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. But then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. Now, in when Israel exited Egypt, the Exodus, there was a cloud that led the that guided the children of Israel by day. And then there was a pillar of fire by night. Oh, Jesus said he was light of the world. Well, guess what a fire does? Gives you warmth, gives you light. Oh yeah. Now this house was filled with a cloud. And some people will tell you that this cloud is represented or called the Shekinah. There's different ways to spell it, but the first three letters are S-H-E. She. K-I-N-A-H. And they will tell you, oh, this is the glory of God. And when you look into the Shekinah, um, well... Let's just say where this came from, she, the Holy Spirit, they'll tell you, she, oh, wait a minute, Bob, I'm confused. What, why are you saying she? Well, the Holy Spirit in the New Testament is always referred to as a he, H-E, but here the you know whose will tell you that the Shekinah, the glory of God, the cloud, is a she. Huh. How's that work? Well, when you look up that, um, they're getting it from outside the Bible. Yeah. Maybe I will put a link and show you where this stuff comes from. May I suggest you pause right here and I will give you a Bible reference. Uh, if you want to know where this Shekinah stuff comes from, may I recommend you read, well, go to the book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 14. Titus 1, verse 14. That's where this Shekinah stuff comes from. Because the Bible in the New Testament is always referred to, the Holy Spirit is always referred to as male. And it's not a she-male. So, yeah. So, let's see. Let's continue all right, so 2 Chronicles 15, 13, last verse, uh, last cha uh, sentence. For he, the Lord, is good, for his mercy endureth forever, 
that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. And by the way, I did a Bible series on uh, For His Mercy Endureth Forever. And I also did a series on clouds, if you're interested. Because, like I say, Israel was led by a cloud uh, during the day. So, if the cloud moved, everybody was to pack their stuff and move. And if the cloud stopped, everybody made camp. So... And that was in the book of Exodus. And in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, I think it's the book of Hebrews, uh, the Lord is going to come back with a cloud of his witnesses. I mean, the Bible just, it just intersects with each other. It's just, it's like a, a piece of cloth with all the threads connected together. So, yeah. Yeah. So why the white, why the white garments? All right, white garments. Let's go to Revelation chapter seven and verse nine. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes, white robes. Uh, can I say that again? clothed with white robes and psalms and palms in their hands. Palms, palm trees, I guess so. Huh, white robes. And cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, he's asking John, what are these which are arrayed, or clothed, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Hey, uh, John, who are these that got, you know, this white clothing and where did they come from? Verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Hey, you know, what, what are you asking me for, right? And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. Huh. These came out of the pre-trib rapture. Huh. No, I don't think so. These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Their sins were washed away in the blood of the Lamb and they were made white. Therefore, you think about that for a couple of minutes. Oh, yeah. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, because they have the living bread and the living water, right? Remember, Jesus told the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, uh, living water. Oh, yeah. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Oh, I love the book of John. Book of John, chapter 2, verse 13. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple... In the temple, those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money 
sitting. So you had the money changers. Uh, in other words, if you got paid, uh, you know, Rome was in charge and Rome would pay you in their legal money. And it would have a picture of Caesar on it, whatever Caesar was available. I don't know. So what they would do is say, well, we, we can't put Caesar's coins in the temple, but we'll give you this holy temple coin in exchange for the Roman coin. And of course, you're, you know, it should be precious metals, either gold or silver, right? And of course, if the Roman coin weighed twice as much as the temple coin with the weight of gold or silver, well, the changers of the money are making money, right? Yeah, I'll give you half price on your gold coin there. And Jesus is not a happy camper. Verse 15. And when he, Jesus, had made a scourge, a whip, a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the money, uh, the changers' money, and overthrew the tables. Threw over through the tables and all the money scattered, right? And said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. Hey, my father's house is not a, a store. And, uh, yeah. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? You know, who do you think you are, Jesus? Verse 19, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? See, it took him 46 years to build this temple, and Jesus is going to tear it down, and he's going to build it back up in three days? Oh. But he spake of the temple of his body. See, Christ body is the temple oh yeah so there you go i'm kind of doing a recap in the song of solomon chapter 5 and verse 10 the lord had the holy spirit right upon their hearts they said my beloved is white and ruddy ruddy means a healthy reddish color like blood my beloved his bride well now the bride is is talking about her beloved my beloved is white and ruddy the chiefest among 10,000 what group of people are white with reddish colored yeah uh, the whole world right oh yeah all right um, well that identifies who the people of the book are I mean, let's face it. Who carried the Bible all over the world? Um, India? No. Japan? No. China? No. Um, who? The people in Europe. And what do they look like? Oh, yeah. So. Uh, let's see. In Isaiah 1 16 the Lord says wash you you know you should wash up is that what baptism is you know the washing of the flesh wash you make you clean put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes cease to do evil learn to do well seek judgment relieve the oppressed judge the fatherless plead for the widow Isaiah 118 come now and let us reason together saith the Lord though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow white as snow well yeah your sins will be washed away in the blood of the lamb though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool if there's a big if. Ye be willing and obedient, 
ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Oh yeah, we're about, uh, the West is about to be devoured with the sword. War. Oh yeah. So, there you go. Now in Daniel chapter 7, um, in verses 1 through 8, we read about the beast. But in verse 9, we read about someone else. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, the thrones of the evil ones, and the Ancient of Days did sit. Why is he an Ancient of Days? Because he's been around pretty, well, for uh, forever. And the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white, white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. The book of life and the book of damnation, I guess. Verse 11. I beheld then because... Of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame, hell. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And I saw in the night visions, behold, one like the Son of Man. Remember, Jesus called himself the Son of Man. One like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Uh, Matthew 24, 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, Christ, in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Oh, yeah. Um, the uh, In Mark 14, the you-know-whos asked Jesus if he was the Christ, and then in verse 62, and Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. In 1 Thessalonians 4.17, Paul writes about the second coming. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them, the dead in Christ, in the clouds. In the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, if the church is not caught up into the clouds, it's not the Messiah, it's not Jesus. Keep that in mind. In Revelation 1 7, it says, Behold, he, Christ, cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him. You know, there's idiots that will tell you that Jesus returned in 70 AD and this is his kingdom. Uh, did you see Jesus coming in the clouds? Uh, me neither. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author 
the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, yeah. Let's go back to Daniel 7, verse 13. Um, and I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that shall not be destroyed. The kingdom of Christ shall never be destroyed. In Daniel 12, 10, we read that many shall be purified. What does purified mean? It means be made pure. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. What does it mean to be tried? Uh, you ever been to... Uh, a trial? Well, after the trial's over, you've been tried. It means to be tested, basically. Many shall be purified, made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. All right, this is part two of White, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.